Welcome back to City and State TV. I'm Morgan Packman, the editor in chief of City and State. Now our guest is Paul Deister. He is the mayor of Niagara Falls, New York. Mayor Deister, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be here. So you are here to attend City and State's New York Canada Summit, and you were on a panel of, of mayors on both sides of the border, and it seems like there's a great deal of accord between the mayors. It flies in the face of, of some of that the dust up that we saw surrounding the Peace Bridge, where it seemed like there might have been some acrimony in our relationship. Could you talk about what is the relationship between uh, elected officials on both sides of the border? Well, we're just finishing up now celebrating uh, you know, the, uh, I guess you could call it celebrating the bicentennial of the War of 1812. I guess we're commemorating the war and, and celebrating 200 years of peace uh, since. And, you know, over that period of time, very, very strong relationships have developed here, not along the border, but across the border, you know. So, you know, we have so many uh, things that we're doing uh, together, uh, whether we're talking about economic development or, or, you know, cultural or social projects, or even just, you know, family ties uh, across the border that, uh, I think the, the mayors sometimes feel like you know, we have more in common with each other here within our binational region than we do with mayors on our own side of the border from other places of our, our countries. And I thought on the panel, you saw that very much in, in evidence here. Uh, there is kind of a, like an us against the world feeling sometimes when we're talking to Ottawa or Washington about our issues uh, here. Uh, that said, of course, uh, there are very, very deeply held feelings about various issues here. And uh, I think I use the example like of an old married couple, you know, I'm, I'm 34th year of a very happy married relationship. That doesn't mean we don't sometimes have little spats about, you know, how uh, best to achieve what we agree are our mutual goals, right? And I think that's true, uh, you know, in any longstanding relationship. It's true in the longstanding, very positive relationship between U and U.S. and Canada here at the border. I mean, you have a tremendous relationship with both the mayor of Niagara Falls, Ontario, the mayor of, of Lake Erie, Ontario. You were sitting on the panel with them today. Do you feel that you are getting the attention that you need from the state legislature in Albany? I mean, there was a, a long-standing sense in western New York that it was like an orphan uh, in terms of the estate. I know that uh, Governor Cuomo has paid a great deal of attention to Western New York and Buffalo in particular. Absolutely. Has that has that attention uh, uh, inured to the benefit of Niagara Falls? And, and have you seen a, a turning of the page in terms of how the rest of the state views you? Uh, I think it's starting to happen. I think it's happening maybe more for Buffalo at the moment than Niagara Falls. We're maybe six months to a year uh, behind you know what's happening in Buffalo in terms of the you know, the groundbreakings, but we know what's in the pipeline. And I mean, there's been a lot of excitement and a lot of publicity statewide for Terry Pagula's investments here in uh, downtown uh, you know, Buffalo, you know, this fantastic, uh, uh, you know, Harbor Place uh, de uh, development. Roughly the same amount of investment is coming to downtown Niagara Falls with projects that are going to break ground uh, next year. People haven't heard about that yet, aside from the people who've been working on the project. So I think this is going to be a great one-two punch. The, the state is hearing now about how things are changing dramatically in Buffalo, and they're going to begin, you know, hearing uh, as we move into next year about how something similar is happening in Niagara Falls. And I think that speaks well, not just for the way the rest of the state views Western New York, but the way downstate views upstate. And I think for a long time, uh, maybe it has been the case, we're viewed as the country cousins, you know, we're, we're not as dynamic economically as them or culturally, and they feel as though maybe sometimes, uh, you know, it's like having a, a, you know, a, a millstone tied around your neck if you're, you know, some hep cat from Manhattan and you got to deal with these people from, you know, Buffalo and Niagara Falls and their old rusty steel mills or whatever. But things are changing here. And, you know, we don't want to be a drag on the rest of the state. We want to show that we're an asset capable of helping to lead the state forward. And I think that there's going to be a whole lot of opportunities for the state of New York as a whole to celebrate triumphs here in Western New York that are going to make us look good, but also make them look good. I mean, you got to remember when someone ca comes across the Rainbow Bridge into downtown Niagara Falls, New York, uh, they're getting their first impression of Niagara Falls. It's true, but it's also their first impression of what New York State is all about, you know. And so we we're there, you know, laying out the welcome mat for people. If we do a good job in promoting the positive things happening under the Buffalo Billion in Buffalo and Niagara Falls and Western New York, I think eventually it's going to sink into the rest of the state that this is going to be transformational for them too. 
You know, you talk about, you know, maybe the six month to a year like spillover from economic growth in Buffalo, how, how it has the residual impact of, of uh, lifting Niagara Falls. Right now, there are more cranes uh, up in Toronto than any other city in the Western Hemisphere, I believe. Do you also see a spillover in terms of economic prosperity from, from Toronto, or does that kind of end at the border? Well, it's, uh, if you look at my camera, I've got pictures of cranes in the uh, city of Niagara Falls with projects that are underway now. A lot of them have something to do with our relationship with Canada, right? So we've got a number of hotels that are under uh, construction in Niagara Falls. I think it's like eight or nine hotel projects in one stage or another. Some of them are Canadian investors. Uh, all of them serve in part a Canadian market uh, based on cross-border uh, shopping. Uh, we have transportation projects, uh, big uh, cranes recently at the Niagara Falls International Railway Station. This is on the future high-speed rail line between New York City and Toronto, right? So again, we're building in anticipation of the importance of the Toronto market uh, uh, going forward. Our Niagara Falls International Airport, you know, completed just a few years ago, uh, services a, a huge percentage of people uh, that are driving to avoid congestion at Pearson. They come across the border uh, and uh, fly out of uh, Niagara Falls International Airport instead to various places in the U.S. And uh, even just recently completed uh, reconstruction by New York Department of Transportation of the bridges over the I-1 uh, uh, Buffalo Avenue over the I-190 uh, so that uh, cross-border shoppers that are coming across the Peace Bridge coming to fashion outlet malls by the tens of thousands, right, uh, have new transportation infrastructure. So uh, there's a, there are a lot of cranes already in Niagara Falls, uh, New York, and a lot of it has to do with the shared prosperity uh, that we have with Southern Ontario. You know, uh, your counterpart in uh, Niagara Falls, Ontario, Mayor Diodati, he was saying about how there are these larger plans to connect Toronto's um, rail system with Niagara Falls and then have a massive corridor from Toronto to New York with the introduction of high-speed rail in New York State. I mean, I mean, is that just a pipe dream, though? I mean, that is such a, a massive undertaking. Um, you, I mean, what do you think is the likelihood of something like that actually occurring? Well, there are investments that are occurring on the U.S. side, and as you heard Mayor Diodati say, they're leveraging those going uh, to their uh, provincial and federal government saying, hey, look, New York State, uh, the American federal government are investing in the Empire Corridor. We have a new station uh, that's under construction. Rochester's building a new uh, station. You have a new station already in Albany. You have uh, track improvements uh, along the way. So these investments are being made. Uh, meanwhile, up at Union Station in Toronto, they have some $750 million being in invested uh, you know, there. So they're making a large commitment to rail in Canada. Our, uh, counterparts across the border are trying to convince them to extend uh, the daily uh, commuter style service from Toronto all the way down to Niagara Falls, Ontario. And the, we're lobbying them. Uh, you know, we have been in contact with the provincial government saying that we're in support of that. And the day that they get the service as far as Niagara Falls, Ontario, we're going to start lobbying to bring it across the border into Niagara Falls, New York. And, uh, you know, the more closely uh, together we're knit through uh, different types of uh, transportation, but especially mass uh, transit, I think the more prosperous we're going to be in the, in the future. So many of our problems revolve around trying to get people and freight back and forth across the border. Anything that you can do to take vehicular traffic off of the bridges, it pays a double dividend. You know, uh, you have a, a tremendous airport too. Uh, and it, I was, one of my colleagues was saying that when, when Air Force One comes, it lands in Niagara, right? And that doesn't land in, in Buffalo because of the capacity of it. Um, are there uh, steps that are in uh, the works to to enhance the, the airport, uh, to, to put greater investment into it? Well, there's a systematic study that's underway now uh, led by the uh, NFTA under the auspices of the Regional Economic Development uh, Council to look at the future of both Buffalo Niagara International Airport and Niagara Falls International Airport to try to find ways that they can complement one another. And I think that's happening now. Uh, it's happening as much maybe uh, serendipitously as through planning and I think what we would like to have is a strategic plan moving forward where for example we knew what types of air service uh, were going to be 
uh, you know, advantaged at which of these airports. So we're not competing against one another when we're going out looking for new carriers or new routes, but rather are, are fitting all of our efforts into some sort of a coherent system going uh, forward. And uh, again, both of those uh, airports are vitally dependent on Canadian customers. So being aware of what's happening in the Canadian market uh, is very, very important to us in uh, both Niagara Falls and Buffalo as we figure out what the future of our airports are going to be. The one thing that's very clear is that the future for both airports right now looks very bright. We heard a lot of frustrations expressed today about the thickening of the border post 9-11 and how that's had a negative impact upon the easy flow of, of commerce and people across the border. Obviously, most of those concerns are on a federal level, way outside of your jurisdiction. But what are you as a mayor doing to try to address um, the, the problems with the, the, with the border? Well, we participate in a number of cross-border organizations, as you heard uh, today. Uh, there's a binational mayor's organization, then there's an organization called the Niagara 10 that brings in the counties and then the regions on the Canadian side. And what we try to do is be certain that, uh, you know, any uh, differences and nuance of approach are resolved uh, between us so that we jointly appeal uh, to both Ottawa and Washington, D.C., uh, sometimes for changes in policy, oftentimes it's really more a fight for resources. And one of the things that's most uh, frustrating uh, to us uh, is that you know, we're crossing the border, we'll see long lines of people uh, trying to you know, get across to access markets on the other side of the border, and the bridge capacity isn't the problem. The problem is that we don't have enough customs agents on either the U.S. or the Canadian side to process people in a reasonable amount of time. Well, that, well that's not a structural problem, I and mean, that's just a problem of uh, you know, maintaining the effort to, you know, financially to support uh, you know, the customs facilities. And uh, you know, it's infuriating to us because there are studies that show that uh, you know, for every one person you hire on as a customs agent, you're possibly creating 30 plus jobs elsewhere in the economy, right? And so these are very, very highly leveraged investments. What a shame if you had 100 other things that are going right in the region leading to prosperity. And then because you can't move fast enough back and forth across the border, all of the rest of that gets handicapped. Of course, the falls are a natural wonder known around the world, but is it ever almost, uh, I hesitate to use this word, but a liability for you because it overshadows the perspective that everybody has on everything else in Niagara Falls where they just compartmentalize it and think of it only as the falls. Yeah, I was at one time at, in a, in a previous administration, I was at the executive uh, mansion and was standing underneath a painting, a landscape painting of Niagara Falls, and one of the Albany staff people, you know, said, well, isn't that, uh, you know, ironic, there's the mayor of Niagara Falls standing underneath the painting of Niagara Falls. One of the other Albany staffers said, Niagara Falls has a mayor, why would a waterfalls need a mayor? I mean, sometimes people don't realize there is such a thing as a city that's at Niagara Falls. Uh, and uh, they, the thing they probably also don't realize, for most of its history, Niagara Falls has been an industrial city. And you know, we're really trying to reinvent ourselves by giving uh, this emphasis to tourism that you've seen in recent uh, years. Uh, we always had a tourism industry, but you know, it's like the crocuses in the spring. Somehow magically, you know, when the weather turned, people would show up as visitors. But we we weren't systematic in terms of the way that we marketed ourselves uh, to them uh, in the way that, uh, for example, our transportation infrastructure uh, you know, was designed to move them in and out of the, of the region. We weren't studying the number of hotel rooms that you know, we could support within the region or doing any of the other sorts of things that you would do to support any other industry, like the chemical industry or the steel industry, or, but we're doing it now. And I think uh, what you're going to see moving forward is a much more uh, systematic treatment of uh, tourism and a, uh, uh, I think also then maybe a, a realization of where the tourism industry uh, can play in the broader economic redevelopment of what is, after all, a post-industrial uh, city. Doing tourism right doesn't solve every single problem that we have in the city of Niagara Falls. We've suffered population you know, loss, so we have large numbers of vacant residential buildings and uh, so on. And so when we're marketing the city, we want people to look at the natural wonder of the falls, at the glitzy new downtown that we're uh, building, 
uh, but we also want the rest of the state to understand in Niagara Falls we face challenges that are very similar to what other upstate uh, cities like Utica, Schenectady, you know, Albany and so forth are, are facing and uh, you know they should they should think of us as being different because we do have this great natural resource but they should also understand that we're struggling with many of the same things as many other similar sized upstate uh, cities. Mayor Paul Deister of Niagara Falls, New York, thank you so much for joining us today on City and State Always TV. Always a pleasure.